Hey guys, Psyche Pictures here, and welcome back to Let's Review Manga. Today we are going back to a manga I've reviewed and really liked. Testament of Sister New Devil, Volume 2. Alright, I've wanted to review this, review and read this for a while. So, let's get started. So, Bazara is the talk of the school and is also an outcast because he has Yuki and Mio on his side. The two idol girls. Bazara is told he should help Yuki, the class president, with some work she has to do, but she insists on doing it by herself. But Bazara insists that he help her out. So the curse that Mio has can also activate through guilt, jealousy, and self-loathing, as well as disobeying Bazara. If you want to know about the curse, watch my review of Volume 1. Bazara then rushes Mio to the nurse's office because she got jealous of seeing Yuki with and Bazara together. In the nurse's office, Mio asks Bazara to do what he did before when the curse hit. And at school of more all places. At this point, the nurse walks in. She states that Bazara needs friends and they should be quality, not quantity. Meaning that the friends should be few and helpful rather than lots and not helpful. The nurse then gets called to the teacher's lounge. The nurse leaves while telling the two that she knew. What? The nurse leaves while telling the two that she knew what was about to happen. So. The two end up falling asleep until about 8 at night. Bazaar calls Maria to pick them up in about an hour while he goes to get a drink. He then meets with Takigawa at the vending machine, who was helping Yuki in Bazaar's place. There is a blackout and monsters suddenly attack. They are after Mio and want to keep Bazaar busy. Bazaar then knocks Takigawa out and starts attacking the monsters. Bazara senses that Mio is headed to the roof. Mio then meets with Yuki, who called her up there. This ends the first chapter. This is a breath of fresh air. I love fight scenes, but just letting characters interact is even better. You have a silly little scene first, and then when it wants to be serious, it is serious. I love manga that do this. Have a silly and serious tone. But not at the same time. There is a time for both, and neither of them cross paths. This is how Monster Mizume should have worked. Have silly fan service moments, but also serious non fan service moments as well, and keep them separate from each other. Let's continue on to chapter 2. Mio tells Yuki that she will not stay away from Bazara because they are family and he promised to protect her. Yuki then retaliates and wants Mio out of the way. Yuki reveals her sword and starts attacking Mio. I guess Yuki is a little jealous of Mio and Bazara. Mio then has a flashback about the different combat types in the series. Mio is Mio is mana, Maria is power, and Bazara is speed. Skill, however, comes from experience and has an advantage over the others. Yuki is a skill type. Yuki says Mio is taking advantage of Bazara, to which Mio says that Bazara got himself involved in Mio's affairs, and she will fight with him. Yuki then tells why Bazara is a rogue hero. In order to save everyone five years ago, he had to wipe out a good number of heroes from the face of the earth. I don't know if more will be explained, but jeez! That alone makes me question why he did that. Did he turn against the heroes? Did the heroes turn rogue? How did this come to be? See, 
This is the kind of writing I love. It makes you want to learn more about what will happen and have good writing on top of it. Bazaar then arrives on the scene and sees the damage from Neo and Yuki's attack. Attacks. Blech. He tells both of them that they shouldn't be fighting in the first place when a person, or a, I think a demon, or something, in a mask, reveals himself. Apparently he knows Bazara. I think that is because of Bazara protecting Mio. It is also revealed that Bazara and Maria have been fighting demons in the middle of the night while Mio was asleep. So, how is Bazara not tired at this point? Since protecting Mio is making Bazara a full blown traitor, Bazara and Maria have been hunting lesser demons at night. And that is also the reason Yuki wanted Bazara away from Mio. Bazara says for Mio to not blame herself, but the other guy. I'll just call him the Phantom. Says it is all her The Phantom says it's all her fault. The Phantom also says that if it is too much for her to handle, just hand over the Demon Lord's power. The Phantom then summons a demon behind Mio, and as Bazara tries to attack, the Phantom says something to distract Bazara, causing his sword to dematerialize. That doesn't stop Bazara as he throws himself in between her and the demon, using himself as a shield. Yuki then retaliates against the Phantom, and he realizes that Bazara is... And she re... And he re... Bleh. And he replies that Bazara is really hurt and to get him treatment right away. Bazara then has a dream about five years ago as a hero. This ends chapter seven. <sighs> Sorry about that. So, this chapter is very well done, revealing a bit of Bazara's past but not enough, but not too much at once. We see all the characters in action and see what their strength and strengths and weaknesses are. This chapter was great, and I hope the greatness continues in Chapter 8. This is the story of when Bazara lived in the village of heroes. Bazara is seen and is a powerful hero at only 10 years old. He even surpasses older trainees. There is also a sword known as the Banishing Shift that is cursed. Once we hear this, someone named Set Saito gets the sword and is now possessed by the evil spirit. He then goes on a rampage, killing everyone, every hero he laid eyes on. Bazara then pushes himself to save Yuki and himself. He succeeds, and the Banishing Shift chose him as its master. Not only that, the trees, grass, and remains of the fallen were eradicated. Nothing remained of any of them. Because of this, Bazara had his title of hero revoked and was banished from the village. I have some problems with this. First, why is he banished when he saved all the heroes? Is it because of there being no bodies left? Is Yuki's word that Bazara saved them all not enough to keep him around? Also, if he was able to tame the evil spirit in the Banishing Shift, which they were talking about, why banish him? Is it because it is a dangerous power? If so, I can understand that. They do brush on that slightly, but not enough. I think they made this decision because they were mad and traumatized. But did they think of how traumatized Bazara was? He witnessed everyone he knew but his dad, the elders, and Yuki get slaughtered. That would traumatize any kid. 
before my issues are addressed, the flashback ends. Bizarre wakes to Maria's delight. He is bandaged due to the strike he took, and since he was trained as a hero, he has enhanced healing. Since Mio was overcome with grief of what happened to Bizarra, she ran away, and now Bizarra and Mio have to go find her. Mio is in the forest where she confronts the Phantom and tries to beat him with her strongest fire attack, but it fails. The Phantom then says he will kill Bizarra if Mio doesn't give up. Mio accepts and has her hands bound by a magic seal. Just as Mio is giving her hands to the Phantom, Yuki arrives wanting to settle the score with him. Going all out, Yuki breaks his magical barrier. The Phantom then sends balls of energy at Yuki, and that bashes her into a tree. Just as the Phantom gets ready for the final blow, Bazaar arrives in front of Yuki. He gets ready to unleash the energy from his banishing shift, and... That ends chapter 8. Okay, the flashback and why Bazaara was banished were bad. I didn't like it. Everything else checks out, though. Bazaara has a reason to live and to keep pushing on and unleash his ultimate energy. I said everything else I wanted to say about this chapter, so let's move on. <sighs> Sorry, to chapter 9. So, the Phantom's attack gets shattered by Bazaara, much to everyone's amazement. Bazaara starts bleeding out of his open wound, but reassures that he will finish the fight before he passes out. With his speed, the Phantom can barely follow his movements. Bazaara slams the Phantom into a tree where the Phantom changes tactics by shooting tons of small red balls at Bazaara. Bazaara cuts the balls to shreds, and makes an attack on the Phantom. The Phantom's barrier is too strong for Bazaara, but, as Bazaara planned, Maria, a power type, crushes the Phantom's barrier with one blow. He tries to recreate the barrier, but Bazaara is too quick and slices him in half, causing the Phantom and Mio's bonds to vanish. While everyone is happy and merry, a hooded demon comes behind Bazaara and stabs him. Mio is upset and uses ma magic that cracks the ground, sends M Yuki and Maria flying, and destroys the demon. This is the result of the demon lord's power going berserk. So, Mio is creating a black hole with her at the center, without being able to control it. Mio then asks for Bazara to kill her, to which he refuses. Because of this, they have a very touching brother-sister moment. Since Bazara isn't a hero anymore, he has nothing to lose but Marie, but Mio herself. Bazara swipes his blade near Mio, and he saves Mio and the world. This ends chapter nine. This was such a good action chapter. There is a reason for the fight. Bazara dealing with his past. And a touching scene at the end. It was incredible. I loved it. Mio thinks she is not worth protecting, but Bizarra thinks otherwise. I love Bizarra's dedication to protecting Mio, and it puts reason for all the fighting which most anime and manga don't get. Also, unlike Attack on Titan Volume 1, the fight scenes are clear on what is happening and aren't obscured by dust. On to the final chapter, Chapter 10. I skimmed through the first few pages and... Maria strikes again. This chapter is three days after the last chapter. <clears throat> Mio goes into Bazara's room to thank him. Maria then steps in for some fan service. She says that she has succubus medicine that can heal people well and is best with body temperature. See where this is going? See where this is going, guys? 
Mio drenches herself in the stuff and rubs her body on Bazara. We have ourselves a fan service scene, and during this, Mio's curse kicks in. Great. After that disturbance that is a bit plot related, Bazara is healed and headed off to school to take care of some business. So after school, Bazara goes to the roof and confronts Takigawa, who is really the phantom from earlier. They have a chat of how Bazara figured it out, then Bazara makes a deal with Takigawa. Takigawa continues to observe Mio, while Bazara doesn't blab about Takigawa failing his mission. They both agree and withdraw. Also, Takigawa says Zolgia killed Mio's foster parents. That ends the manga. Oh, also, two heroes are seen at the end, but that's for another time. This chapter could have done without the fan service, but it fits because of Maria Succubus' character. The verbal confrontation between Bazara and Takigawa was great. It was smart, well thought out, and entertaining. Overall, this volume was great. I loved it. Same great characters, same great story, and great interactions. The weakest part is Bazaar's backstory, but I still think this manga was great. Looking forward to Volume 3. Next up is Senrin Kagura Skirting Shadows Volume 1. This has been Psychic Pictures, and I'll see you guys next time.